Well, it's one of the deadliest airline accidents to ever happen over U.S. soil and is still the source of controversy and debate. I talked to investigators and eyewitnesses to try to figure out what really caused TWA Flight 800 to explode just off our south shore. We just saw an explosion out here, it's going to be 507. TWA 800 center. It's about, about 16,000 feet or something like that, it just went down. TWA 800, if you hear center right then. I think that was him. I think so. I'll go at 8.31 p.m. on July 17, 1996, 230 people died when TWA Flight 800 exploded midair and fell into the ocean just south of Mauritius Inlet. After a four-year joint investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, the FBI, and the CIA, the official report concluded that a spark in the 747 center wing fuel tank likely caused the explosion. But again, no evidence of an explosion just from looking at the boxes. We certainly can't no, tell. We, can't, we couldn't tell that. It was because the way the aircraft had exploded, portions of the aircraft continued. The nose piece fell off and then the bulk of the aircraft. But numerous eyewitnesses, along with members of the investigation itself, say that conclusion is way off course. There is more than plenty witness evidence that there were, there were two missiles fired at sea and one missile fired from shore. And we all looked out the window and we saw a large fireball coming up out of the water. A radar hits of debris going out the right side of the airplane in excess of Mach 4, which is about 6,000 plus or minus miles per hour. Henry Hughes was the senior accident investigator for the NTSB at the crash site. He says radar traces show pieces of wreckage rocketing away from the jet at three to four times the speed of sound. He also points to chemicals found on the seats and portions of the fuselage. The government called it glue. He says it was explosive material. Hughes believes there's no doubt something hit TWA Flight 800. That's an explosion that occurred external to the airplane, and we know that from looking at the victims and the interior. Every year on the anniversary, friends and family gather here at the memorial to remember those lost in the crash. It's an ominous tribute to the third most deadly aviation accident in the U.S. However, for many, the question whether it was an accident remains. More than 200 people claim the night of the crash they saw a bright light head up into the sky, arch above, and then head directly toward Flight 800. And none of those witnesses were ever allowed to publicly testify at the NTSB hearings. The official report is somebody's fantasy. Fred Meyer is a retired Air National Guard helicopter pilot and decorated Vietnam veteran. He was flying a practice approach at Gabreski Airport near West Hampton the night of the crash. Directly ahead of me, my scan picks up a rocket balloon moving about 10 degrees above the horizon moving from my left center to my further left. Those were clearly four missiles, the explosions of four missiles or anti-aircraft weapons. Critics of the official findings point to some of the damage in the fuselage as more consistent with a missile strike than an internal explosion. However, Jim Hall, chairman of the NTSB at the time, still stands by the report. There was enough evidence there. I reviewed every piece of information. Everything that you mentioned was reviewed by everyone involved. But Hughes, a veteran government crash expert, says this investigation was anything but normal. Everything from uh, people breaking into my hangar at 3 o'clock in the morning and removing parts, uh, people who weren't authorized to, I might add, the FBI caught their own people breaking in and didn't know, uh, said they didn't know why they were doing it. The whole thing was controlled. Our agency did an outstanding job at the time, and I don't know what purpose some of these people may have in trying to, uh, to keep the matter alive. 20 years has done nothing to calm the waters between the official findings of the government and those who remain on board with the missile theory. This was on American soil on a beautiful summer day, and 230 people on a commercial airliner were killed when it was shot down off Long Island. Well, to this day, the NTSB and FBI investigations both remain open. And 20 years later, 
Fred Fritz Meyer remains vocal about what he saw that night. Fred joins us now from Smith Point County Park at the TWA Flight 800 Memorial. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk with us tonight, Fred. All right, it's been 20 years. My pleasure. Thank you. And it's been 20 years. Take us back, July 17th, 1996. Let me ask you this directly. Any doubt in your mind that night when you were headed toward Gabreski Airport that you saw a missile, an actual missile, heading up in the air toward Flight 800? There's no doubt in my mind. Um, I flew helicopters over North Vietnam. If I didn't know what a missile looked like, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I saw a single missile. I tracked the missile to its explosion. And I saw a total of four ordnance explosions before the petrochemical explosion, which was the tank fuel in the aircraft. Well, one of the things that's, uh, that we found curious here is the, the, the chairman at the time, James Hall, the chairman of the uh, NTSB, he was supposed to interview all of the <coughs> witnesses. There were hundreds of witnesses who claimed to have seen a missile-type object heading up into the air. He admitted to us that he did not, because of the scene was so chaotic, he did not get a chance to interview all of those witnesses. I'm going to play a soundbite for you, and at the other side of this, I'm going to ask you some questions. The FBI and their agents uh, were trained and did their job as they thought it should have been done for a criminal investigation. We would have approached it much differently, but to be honest, we didn't have the number of people to go and immediately talk to hundreds of people on Long Island that were saying they had witnessed this event. Well, Fred, now you yourself, gave your statement to the FBI. Tell us about how that happened and your experience of giving your statement to the FBI. All right, uh, the, N the FBI did not come to me, the commanding officer of the helicopter unit of which I was a member, told me to go to the East Merchants Coast Guard Station, seek out the N FBI and give them my story. I flew over there in a helicopter with friends. I was dropped off. I went to the trailer, I knocked on the door, and a man came out uh, um, stripped to the waist, uh, very muscular. It appeared that he had been lifting weights in the trailer. And uh, <clears throat> I told him who I was, and I told him I came to tell him what I saw. Um, he seemed stunned. He said, uh, just a minute, and uh, he closed the door. And I could hear on the other side of a very thin uh, trailer door that there was a discussion going on that went on for three, four minutes. Uh, when the door opened again, another gentleman, this one dressed, came to the door and uh, asked me who I was. I repeated uh, my identification. And then I was told to go into another room in the trailer and sit down with this muscular gentleman who had put on a t-shirt at that time. He took out a small um, spiral notepad about, oh, maybe two and a half inches by four inches, and uh, sat across from me on a small table and said, what did you see? Realizing that I was speaking to the FBI, I gave a very lengthy and detailed description of everything I saw. And when I finished, he said, is that it? And I said, yes. I noted that he had not written a single thing. He had not made a pencil mark on his notepad. And he said, okay, you can go, and I left. And you left, and you never never heard from the, the FBI again as far as giving statements before. You know, you also uh, say that you saw not just one explosion, but you're, you're saying there were multiple missiles, four explosions that, that happened on that plane that night, right? I saw one missile. I saw four high-velocity ordnance-type explosions, and a fifth explosion, the last one, was petrochemical. Now, what's the difference? Ordnance explosions are very fast, over 2,500 uh, feet per second in expansion. A petrochemical explosion is well under that, maybe somewhere around 1,000 feet per second. It's perceptible to the human eye. You can see which one is ordnance and which one is petrochemical. 
All right, well, thank, uh, Fred, I, I, I want to say, I know you have a lot more to say. You've kept to your story since 1996. We've interviewed you several times on this. Uh, we appreciate your time. Um, I want everyone to know that uh, you were one of the first people over the site, too, as well, that night. Uh, you took your helicopter and diverted it over there. Um, Fred is planning to hop on Facebook Live from the beach. He has much more to talk about him. Uh, you can ask him questions at the News 12 Facebook page while you watch the newscast itself. Uh, so ask him some questions. He'll answer your questions live tonight. He's a lot more. It's a very fascinating story that he has. Plus, tomorrow night, our special series, TWA 800, 20 years later, will focus on lessons learned in the wake of the Jumbo Jets explosion. And if you'd like to watch more exclusive interviews from this special TWA series, plus additional archive footage, go to news12.com or go to channel 612 and click on News 12 Extra. We'll be right back.